In this video, I will discuss how to interpret quartiles. Now, to define quartiles, quartiles are basically the values within a distribution of scores that can be used to divide the distribution of scores up into four equal chunks. So usually we think of the quartiles being three of them, the first quartile, the second quartile, and the third quartile. And what these three quartiles allow us to do is to break the distribution of scores into quarters. In other words, the lowest score in the first quartile between the, those two values represents 25% of the curve. Between the first quartile and the second quartile represents another 25% and so on. So that we can have markers or scores that can break the distribution of scores up into quarters or quartiles. So what we have here is some data on uh, test scores. So we have 30 data points of different test scores and what I've done is using the quartile function in Excel, I've determined what the th scores are that are associated with the three quartiles. So the first quartile, also known as the 25th percentile, is associated with the score of 30. The second quartile, or what's also known as the 50th percentile, or more commonly the median score, is associated with a test score of 62. And the third quartile, also known as the 75th percentile, is associated in this instance with a score of 79. So as we look at this graphic down here at the bottom, we can see that each of the quartiles divides the distribution of scores up into quarters. So as I mentioned before, between 0 and 39, the first quartile score represents 25% of all the scores. The range of scores between 39 and 62 the first and second quartile represents another 25 percent. Now the second quartile score or the 50th percentile in this case which is 62 divides the distribution in half. So 50 percent of the scores will be below 62 and 50 percent of the scores will be above 62. Now we can also use the quartiles to determine something known as the interquartile range which is basically taking the third quartile score, in this case 79, and then subtracting from that the first quartile score, or 39. So we'd end up with an interquartile range, in this case, of 40. And that again gives us a sense of how dispersed the scores are. The larger that interquartile range, the more dispersed scores are in that middle 50% of the distribution of scores. The narrower it is, the less dispersed. So an interquartile range of 40 would give us some indication of the dispersion of scores in the middle 50%. If that interquartile range was 20, that would mean that we have a narrower dispersion of scores in that middle 50%. So as I mentioned, the interquartile range gives us an idea of between what two scores 50% of all the scores lie. So in this case, 50% of all scores lie between 39 and 79. Now let's look at what this might mean relative to the, to the normal distribution, looking at the bell curve. So again, as we, as we look at the bell curve, again, the area under the curve is represented, represents 100% of all the scores. And here is that median score, the 50th percentile, or the second quartile. So that's right in the middle, divides the curve in half. And looking at our previous data, that's represented by a score of 62. Now the 25th percentile, or the first quartile, is represented by a score of 39. So that means that 25% of all the scores in our distribution are less than 39. And then the 75th percentile, or the third quartile, is represented by a score of 72. So other ways we can interpret this is, again, if we're talking about the score of 39 at the first quartile, we can say again this is the 25th percentile so that means that 25 percent of all scores will be below 39 but conversely that means that 75 percent of all the scores will be above 39. Now because the distribution of scores is a mirror image it's symmetrical we can make similar conclusions about the third quartile in this case the score of 72. So because that score of 72 is associated with the 75th percentile that means that 75% of scores are below 72, but 25% of scores are above it. And then lastly, we can look at the median, or the second quartile, 
or the 50th percentile, and we can say that 50% of scores will be below 62, and 50% of scores will be above 62. Now the last thing we can look at is that interquartile range. So that's the range of scores between the 25th and the 75th percentile. And that again represents the middle 50% of the curve. So again, we could conclude that 50% of all test scores will be between 39 and 72. So again, the quartiles are ways that we can represent the distribution of scores. We can talk about them in terms of percentiles, and we can also talk about them in terms of how they divide up or delineate scores within the normal curve. So we typically use this as a descriptive way to uh, talk about the distribution of scores, but we can also use it as, as a crude comparison tool. So again, if, if your score is 39, you can say that, well, I scored better than 25% of everybody else in the distribution, but 75% of people scored better than I did. And then lastly, we can use the, the quartiles is a way to figure out if scores are extreme. The outlier labeling technique uses the quartiles, specifically the first and the third, as a way to then calculate cutoff points to say that a certain score, if it's above or below a value, would be considered an outlier. So, so those, those are some of the different ways that we utilize quartile scores and how we interpret them. And it's a relatively uh, simple technique to be able to calculate them and then utilize them. So hopefully you've learned something from this video and good luck using this technique in your own research.